I guess I'm a studio engineer, programmer, writer, performer, player. I think these days you need to be able to diversify and have many skills. Massive Attack is, is Daddy G in 3D, so it's always the ideas and the concepts will always come from them, and it's my job to kind of to assist that process and to guide things technically. So I'll make sure we're recording everything properly, and, and you know, no, no ideas are getting lost along the way. very interested in music technology after picking up a guitar when I was about 10 years old. I taught myself kind of playing keys and the technology side of stuff in my bedroom. So a lot of my teenage years, as many teenage boys years are, spent in locked away in my bedroom with a copy of Fruity Loops and the guitar to kind of play along with. I was just so excited to be creating music and to be creating music that to my ears sounded like records that I was hearing. I could make drum beats, I could play some keys, I could make synth sounds and on the summer of 2004 I think I, I kind of got an opportunity to help in the Massive Attack studio when they were moving to a new premises. So suddenly I walked into a room with all the outboard and a big mixing desk, all this stuff that I'd um, been reading about in magazines. So it suddenly became quite real you quickly realise your ideas of what working in music and in studios are compared to what the reality is. It's, it's a lot of hours and it's a lot of hard work. The opportunities would come and luckily I, would, you know, I was there and I was always, always enthusiastic and willing to take that chance to be able to have you know, a more creative kind of input. And sometimes Dee will come in with a concept, with an idea. Sometimes it will come from, from jamming, from finding a sample, from getting a beat from playing with the modular, you never know really, you've just got to be ready. <laughs> I've been very lucky to, to work on both sides of, of the coin, you know, I, I really enjoy the studio work, but the buzz of performing live, of, of having a deadline that you need to have a show ready because tickets have been sold, it's such a thrill. It's been really great for me personally to experience that, that side of, of music, you know, to be able to work on music in the studio environment, the controlled environment, to have that time to really make sure everything's perfect and to suddenly be on a stage, nowhere to hide, and, and to see the, the immediate reaction to, to stuff that you've worked on is immensely satisfying. Being based in Bristol has been a big influence on on everybody and obviously it's had a it's got a big identity in music it's maybe the pace of life here it's 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 small enough that you that you know that you're going to bump into someone when you're walking down the street it's big enough that there's enough kind of going on history of the place the, the culture um, it's definitely just all fed in to, to the creativity of it I've been quite obsessed with the electronic side of stuff in the recent years since and I've, I've really enjoyed getting to, to grips with Micro Freak. I love the, it's the kind of, kind of cross-modulation of it all. That's what I love about my modular synth as well. So this is a kind of cross-modulating pad synth. Kind of sound I, I quite like. My favourite sounds are when you have kind of cross rhythms and, and just being able to create that kind of stuff really instantly is, is really satisfying. It looks unique, I like the touch plate. The way it's kind of built and set up is, is really easy to get ideas going. Might be quite nice to put the wave on an LFO there just to get that. I know we started building some patches and getting some little loops going and yeah, it was, it was really instant and really quite gratifying, yeah. It's great as a controller with the aftertouch. You know, that's been, been good fun, really slotted into my modular setup. At the moment, it, it, it's, it's in the studio, but I can, 
I can imagine it being used in some, yeah, for some some kind of setup. Yeah, if it if it happens to be the sound source on the next on a on a track that we do, then then we will have to use it. I like sounds just with a bit of movement. I like the kind of shorter envelopes and just some of that kind of modulating kind of BT sounds that I've managed to get out of it as well. Really, really cool. It's great to just have some modulation on the wave and the timbre and the shape. The cycling envelope is great fun to get stuff kind of crossing over itself. It's nice to just build in a little sequence and then drown something over the top. It's always just nice to tweak. And you know, on the software versions of the plugins you use, I generally start with the kind of basic initial patches, you know, without any of the bells and whistles, without any of the effects, and kind of start from there. So like with the Jupiter 8 or something, it was just it's a nice simple patch, but it doesn't take much just to get that sounding really sweet. I've recently been using the EMS synthy, which is great. Jupiter 8, Selena, Profit, yeah, that's great. The Buchler Music Easel, Sounds fantastic. It definitely can do, do a whole array of sounds for sure. Part of the joy and thrill of music is that you never stop learning and that you're always discovering new techniques and surprising yourself. I'm a sucker for a, for a pad and for, for stuff that just sounds nice. <laughs> I can make those noises all day, yeah. <laughs>